and welcome to MFC Online. In today's video, we will be talking about seasons, solstices, and equinoxes. Let's get started. In the olden times, people used to spend a lot much more time outdoors than we're often able to today. And because of this, people could see clearly where the sun rose every morning and where it set every evening. And what people began to notice after some time is that from a certain day in winter, the sun began to rise a little bit further to the north and a little bit further to the north and a little bit further to the north until finally there came a day in the summer when the sun seemed to stop and stand still. After that, it seemed as though the sun began to rise a little bit to the south and a little bit further to the south and, you guessed it, a little bit further to the south until it got back to that day in winter when it rose as far to the south as it rises. It's to this turning point in the sun's journey that they gave the name solstice. Solstice comes from two Latin words. The first one is sol, meaning sun, and the second one is sistere, meaning to stand. They named it that because on the solstice, it seemed as though the sun was standing still. Well, early people noticed that there are two solstices, one in the summer and one in the winter, to which they named it the summer solstice and the winter solstice. Early people also noticed something else. They noticed that from the winter solstice, the days started to get a little bit longer and a little bit longer until the summer solstice, which was the longest day of the year. And then the days started to get a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter until the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year and the longest night. And it's still like this today. Well, the question I have for you today is, why is it like this? Why do we have longer days in the summer and shorter days in the winter? Let's find out. Well, why is this? Why, why? Yes, why, Hikaru? Why do we have longer days in summer and shorter nights? And why do we have shorter days in winter and longer nights? Let's take a look using this lamp as the sun and this sphere as our earth. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take this Expo marker and right here, mark off where we are in Chicago in the Northern Hemisphere. And we're gonna watch that spot in Chicago. Now, as we know, the Earth does two rotations. It rotates around itself and it rotates around the sun. But when the Earth rotates around itself and around the sun, it doesn't rotate up and down exactly like this. It actually rotates just like this. Now here's how that affects our seasons and our day and our night. If the earth rotated straight up and down all the time, all year long, just like this, then the earth would spend equal parts in day and equal parts in night all year long. But because the earth rotates on a tilt, as you can see, depending on where the earth is, sometimes it spends more time in light and sometimes it spends less time. Just like we saw with the globe and the sun, we can see the same exact thing here on this chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take these little beans and I'm going to place them right here in the Northern Hemisphere. These are going to represent us in Chicago in North America. Let's start here. When the Earth is over here, we can see that we have our long nights and our short days. But as we move on, when we come here, we can see that we have equal day and equal night in the Northern Hemisphere. As the Earth continues to move, over here, we have our longer days and our shorter nights. Moving along, Back here, we have equal day and equal night once again. The earth continues to move, and back over here, we have 
our shortest day and our longest night. Now, as the Earth moves on and we get back up to here, we have what's called the spring equinox. That word, equinox, is a Latin word. Equa means equal and nox means night. So equinox represents a time during the seasons when we, the day and night are equal to one another. Down here, we have our autumn equinox. Just like the spring equinox, this is a time when day and night are of equal length. Let's set these to the side over here. So there's something else I wanna show you on this chart. If we take a look at our drawn globes of the Earth here, we can see that the Earth is sectioned off into different parts by these lines. These horizontal lines that cross the Earth are imaginary lines called lines of latitude. And the Earth has one line that runs exactly through its center. This line is known as the equator. It has equa in it, meaning that it is divided into equal halves. So looking at our autumn equinox, where again we have equal parts, day and night, I want you to notice something here. If we take a look at our sun, our sun is emitting its rays, and if we follow the line of the rays, we can see that it hits exactly on that equator. The rays of the sun hit exactly where the middle of the earth is. Moving on here to winter, let's place our equator tab. And let's take a look at where the sun's rays are hitting here. Ah, down here we see that the sun's rays during winter are no longer hitting the equator. They're actually hitting below it on this line in the southern hemisphere. Going back up to the spring equinox, let's place our card for the equator again, and let's take a look at where the sun's rays are hitting. Once again, our sun's rays are hitting on the equator, in the middle of the earth. This is during the equinox when we have equal parts, day and night. Going around again to our summer, we're gonna place our equator card and again look at the sun's rays. Now we have something completely different going on. Here, the sun's rays are not hitting on the equator. They're not even hitting below it. They're actually hitting above it here in the northern hemisphere. Moving our card back all the way around again, we come back to our autumn equinox where we see that the sun's rays are hitting exactly along the equator once again. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. Here again, we have the equator. The line directly below the equator where the sun's rays hit during the winter solstice is called the Tropic of Capricorn. The line directly above the equator where the sun's rays hit during the summer solstice is called the Tropic of Cancer. Let's take a look at how we can follow up this work. Your challenge is to make your own sundial. Just like people did in olden times, you are going to discover a way that you can track the progress of the sun from morning, noon, to night using a sundial. Your first step is to research what it is and how it works. Next, build it. Use the instructional video link in the description below or you can research another method and try that one. Step number three is to observe. Pick a sunny day and a spot outside and watch what happens. Last but not least, please share. You can take a picture or video and send it to me by email anytime you would like. That's all I have for this video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.